another quarter in the jukebox. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter four, lesson number two, separating the variables, but looking at log and exponential rules. So in the last lesson, we were solving differential equations and we're going to do the same thing. But sometimes it is necessary to use log and exponential rules in order to solve the differential equations. So you will remember from higher these rules. If you have e to the power of a plus b, we could split that up. That's the same as e to the power of a times e to the power of b. Remember when it's the same base, you add the indices. If you have log base a of x plus log base a of y, well again it's the same base, but you've got x and y, so you can multiply them together. If you have log base a of x, take away log base a of y, again the base is the same when you're subtracting, well that can be log base a of x divided by y. And if you have log base a of x to the power of n, you can move the n down, and you will end up with n log base a of x. Examples 1, 2, 4 were in the first lesson, so now let's look at example 5. Find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx equals 4y. What's the first thing that you have to do? Puppy, it helps out. Perfect, you separate the variables. So separating the variables, let's multiply both sides by dx. So we end up with dy equals 4y dx, and then divide both sides by y. So we've got the x's on one side and y's on the other, and that is what we end up with. As you can see, the variables have been separated. Woo! What do you do now? Perfect, you integrate both sides. So we're integrating one over y with respect to y, and we're integrating four with respect to x. From that then, if we integrate one over y goes to, perfect, it goes to ln y. And if you integrate four with respect to x, it goes to four x. Remember, you'll have constants on one side, you'll have constants on the other, but really you would just move them all to one side and you would just have a plus c on your right hand side. From there, well, we want to get down to y equals. How do you do that? Well, the inverse of ln would be an exponential. So let's take the exponential of both sides. So e to the power of ln y will equal e to the power of 4x plus c. Where do you go from there? Well, think about those rules. If you have e to the power of something plus something, you can split that up. So e ln y will just stay as it is just now, but that can be written as e to the power of 4x times e to the power of c. Woo! And then from there, well, you could have thought e to the power of ln, well, they're going to cancel out, just leaving you with y, and we'd have e to the power of 4x times e to the power of c. However, you tend not to leave it as e to the power of c. What you would say is you would just let that equal a. So y equals a times e to the power of 4x. And that's your answer. Example 6, find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx equals y plus 2 over x plus 1. Again, the first thing you need to do is separate the variables. So, cross multiply here, multiply both sides by dx, multiply both sides by x plus 1. That will give us x plus 1 times dy equals y plus 2 dx. From there, well, again, we need x on one side, y on the other, so let's divide both sides by y plus 2 and divide both sides by x plus 1. That will then give us 1 over y plus 2 dy equals 1 over x plus 1 dx. And as you can see, the variables have been separated. Oof. So we integrate both sides. So let's integrate 1 over y plus 2 and integrate 1 over x plus 1. Doing that, if we integrate 1 over, well, just remember here, if you integrate 1 over x, it goes to ln x. 1 over ax plus b goes to ln ax plus b, but divide by the derivative. Here, if you differentiate y plus 2, you would just get 1, so we don't really need the 1 over a part. We're just going to write that as ln y plus 2. And if you integrate 1 over x plus 1, again, the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so it goes to ln x plus 1. And you've also got that plus c. From there, if you want to get into y equals, well, you'd have to get rid of ln. The inverse of ln is your exponential. So let's take the exponential of both sides. So e to the power of ln y plus 2 equals e to the power of ln x plus 1 plus c. 
From there, again, you've got e to the power of something plus something. So you could split that up. That goes to e to the power of ln x plus 1 times e to the power of c. Again, normally you go back the way and you think if it's the same base, you would add the indices. Here, we're just reversing that. So it's e to the power of something times e to the power of something else. E, L, N, as I said, E and L, N, they're the inverse of one another, so they will cancel out, leaving you with Y plus 2. That will equal, again, E, L, N, they will cancel, leaving you with X plus 1, and you're multiplying that by E to the power of C. Remember, you don't leave it as E to the power of C, you would just bring in another letter there, and you generally let A equal E to the power of C. Therefore, y plus 2 will equal a times this x plus 1. And to get y on its own, subtract 2 from both sides. So that will be your answer. Example 7, find the general solution of this differential equation. dy by dx equals y over 2x take away 1. Again, how do you solve these? Perfect. The first thing you need to do is separate the variables. So, separating the variables, let's cross multiply. Woo! If you cross multiply, you will end up with 2x take away 1 dy equals y dx. Divide both sides by y, divide both sides by 2x take away 1, and we will end up with 1 over y dy equals 1 over 2x take away 1 dx. As you can see, the variables have been separated. Well done. From there then, Clark, what would you do next? Perfect, you will integrate both sides. So integrating one over y dy and integrating one over two x take away one dx will give us, well, one over y, if we integrate that with respect to y, we just get ln y. And if we integrate one over two x take away one, we get ln two x take away one. However, what do you need to remember? Good, you need to divide by the derivative. So if you differentiate 2x take away 1, you get 2. So really using this rule here, you'd have 1 over 2 ln 2x take away 1. Just like that. And you've also got that plus c. From there, where would you go next if we want to get down to y equals? Perfect. Use your log rules. So we've got a half in front of ln. So let's move that up. So that goes to ln y equals ln 2x take away 1 to the power of a half, and we've still got plus c. After that, well, really, power of a half is going to be square root, so that means ln y equals ln the square root of 2x take away 1 plus c. And to get rid of ln, you'd have to use the inverse, so use exponentials. So let's take e of both sides. So e to the power of ln y equals e to the power of this right-hand side, this ln root 2x take away 1 plus c. After that, because you've got e to the power of something plus something, you can split that up. So we'd have e ln y equals e to the power of ln root 2x take away 1 times e to the power of c. After that, e ln, they will both cancel, so you will end up with y equals... And then e ln cancel again, so we'd have root 2x take away 1 times e to the power of c. But just like the other examples, you tend not to leave it as e to the power of c. You just bring in another letter there. So just write that as a. So y would equal a times the square root of 2x take away 1. Example 8. First of all, express 2x plus 3 over x bracket x plus 1 in partial fractions, and then for part b, hence find the general solution of the differential equation, x bracket x plus 1 dy by dx equals y bracket 2x plus 3, expressing y explicitly in terms of x. So, what's the first thing you notice if you have to write this in partial fractions? Amar, help us out. Brilliant, you can see that the, de the denominator contains distinct linear factors. So, that means we can write that fraction as a over x plus b over the x plus 1. From there, to add the fractions, we need the same denominator. You can see a is over the x, but we're needing it over x bracket x plus 1. So, multiply the numerator and denominator here by x plus 1. B is over x plus 1, but we're needing it over x bracket x plus 1, so we're missing the x. So multiply the numerator and denominator by x. After that, you can see the denominator is the same. Yeah! 
So you can add denominators. So if you do that, you end up with a bracket x plus one plus bx over x bracket x plus one. After that, you can see that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal. If the denominators are the same, then the numerators will also be the same. So let's cancel the denominators, and that leaves us with 2x plus 3 equals a bracket x plus 1 plus bx. From there, where do you go after that? Well, we're thinking we need to find the values of a and b. So to do that, let's try and eliminate either a or b to find the other. So to do that, choose some values of x. So Bellamy, what would you let x equal first of all? Perfect, if x was equal to negative one, we'd have two times negative one plus three. That will give us one equals negative one plus one is zero, so we'd have zero a, and then we'd have plus b times negative one. So in other words, take away b. That lets you work out the value of b. So b is negative one. After that, we found the value of b, choose another value of x. Well, the obvious one to go for would be 0. If x was equal to 0, well, that would be 0 times b, and that would eliminate b, letting us find a. So 2 times 0 plus 3 is going to be 3. That will equal 0 plus 1 times a, which is just a, and you'd have 0b. So we've got the values of a and b, meaning then that that fraction that we were asked to express in its partial fractions can be written as, or well, remember you had a over x, so that will be 3 over x, and then we've got plus negative 1 over the x plus 1. But bring the negative to the front, so it goes to take away 1 over x plus 1. So that is it written in partial fractions. Let's look at part b then. So for part b, we were asked to hence find the general solution of the differential equation x bracket x plus 1 dy dx equals y bracket 2x plus 3, expressing y explicitly in terms of x. So the first thing that you have to do, where do you go first? Murphy. Perfect. You would multiply both sides by dx, so separate the variables. So doing that then, if we do that, we would end up with x bracket x plus 1 dy equals y bracket 2x plus 3, but dx would be on the right hand side. From there, well after that we want to get x's to one side, y's to the other, so let's divide both sides by y, so we end up with 1 over y and dy on this side, and then let's divide both sides by x bracket x plus 1, gets rid of it on the left and moves it over to the right. So you can see all the y's are on the left and x's are on the right. And the variables have now been separated. Woo! Echo, where do you go next? Brilliant, you would integrate both sides. So integrating both sides, we have integrate 1 over y dy equals, and then we've got the integral of the right hand side. Integrating that then, how would you do it? Help me out. Very good. You would have to use your previous answer. So in part A, we were told that 2x plus 3 over x bracket x plus 1 equals, and we wrote that in its partial fractions, and that is what we got. So before we integrate that, we have to rewrite it in this form to make it a lot easier to integrate. So doing that then, that 1 over y will just stay as 1 over y, but the right hand side 2x plus 3 over x bracket x plus 1 becomes the integral of the 3 over x. Take 1 over x plus 1. So integrate that then. 1 over y will go to ln y. 3 over x goes to 3 times ln x. And then we're taking away 1 over x plus 1 goes to ln x plus 1. And we'd also have plus c. You know, from there, if you have any number in front of ln here, there's a 3 in front of ln x, so move that up. If we move it up, we'd have ln x cubed, and that is the only change there. From that, where would you go next? Well, you can see that you've got ln something in terms of x, take away ln something in terms of x, so let's rewrite that. So ln y is staying as that, but ln x cubed take away ln x plus 1. Think about your log rules, where do you go, Indra? Perfect, you will have ln x cubed over x plus 1, and we've still got plus c. From that then, well, you'd want to get y just on its own. So to do that, let's take the exponentials of both sides. So e to the power of ln y equals e to the power of ln x cubed over x plus 1 plus c. 
But remember, because you've got e to the power of all of that, you can split up. So it's e to the power of this ln fraction times e to the power of c. After that then, well, you know e ln will cancel out, so you will be left with y equals. E ln again cancel out, leaving you here with x cubed over x plus 1, and you're multiplying that still by e to the power of c. From there, to finish that off, well, you know you don't leave it as e to the power of c, you just replace that with a number, a letter, so we're just replacing that with a. So, y equals a times x cubed over x plus 1. And that is your answer. Example 9, express x plus 1 over x bracket 2x plus 1 in partial fractions, and b, hence find the general solution of the differential equation, dy by dx equals y bracket x plus 1 over x bracket 2x plus 1, expressing y explicitly in terms of x. So again, the first thing that you notice to here, what do you notice? Brilliant, you can see that the denominator contains distinct linear factors. Woo, and that is what we want. Therefore, you can write this fraction as a over x plus b over 2x plus 1. If you're unsure about any of these, look back to chapter 1 with partial fractions. I'll go over it in a bit more detail. From there, we need the same denominator. So, denominator here a is over x, but we need it over x bracket 2x plus 1, so we're missing this 2x plus 1. So multiply the numerator and denominator by 2x plus 1. b is over 2x plus 1, but again, we need it over x bracket 2x plus 1. We're missing the x. So multiply the top and the bottom by x. After that, you can see the denominator is the same, so let's add the numerators. That will give us a bracket 2x plus 1 plus bx, over x bracket 2x plus 1. After that, left hand side and the right hand, right -hand side are equal. So you can see the denominators are the same, the numerators therefore will also be the same. So let's cancel the denominators and that means then that x plus 1 equals a bracket 2x plus 1 plus bx. Now we have that, where do we go next? Well, we're wanting to find the values of a and b. So let's choose certain values of x. If we let this equal 0, that will be 0 times a, and it will eliminate a. So the value of x that we need would be, good, negative a half. So if x was equal to negative a half, that will then give us negative a half add 1 is 0 0.5, or a half. That will equal, well, that becomes 0 times a, so that's eliminating a, and that would be negative a half times b, so it's take away a half b. From there then, b works out to be negative 1. After that, well, if x was equal to 0, that would eliminate b. So we'd have 0 add 1, which is 1. That would equal a times 2 times 0 add 1. It's just 1, so it's just a. And we'd have 0 b. From there, then, we know the value of a would be 1. We were asked to express this in partial fractions. We split it up and we add a over x. a is equal to 1, so it becomes 1 over x plus b over 2x plus 1. b is negative 1, so we'd have add negative 1 over. But let's just bring the negative to the front, and it goes to negative 1 over 2x plus 1. So that is it written in its partial fractions. Part b, hence find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx equals y bracket x plus 1 over x bracket 2x plus 1, expressing y explicitly in terms of x. So to do this, the first thing that we have to do is separate the variables. You got it, separate the variables. So doing that, well, what you want to think is, let's move the dx over to the right hand side, and let's move this x bracket 2x plus 1 over to the left hand side, so let's cross multiply. From there, well, we just want the y's on this side, so let's bring this y over by dividing both sides by y. That will give us 1 over y dy, but with all these x's, let's move them to the other side. So divide both sides by x bracket 2x plus 1. Therefore, we will be left with x plus 1 over x bracket 2x plus 1 dy. X. There are other ways to do that, but just as long as you separate the variables. And as you can see, they have now been separated. High five! From there, you can integrate both sides. So let's integrate both sides. We're integrating 1 over y, and we're integrating x plus 1 over x bracket 2x plus 1. How do we integrate this right-hand side then? Can anybody see? Octavia, what are you thinking? 
Perfect. Use your answer from part A. Part A asked us to express x plus 1 over x bracket 2x plus 1 in its partial fractions. And that is the answer we came up with. Ain't we clever? So from there, we can say then that this whole line will become 1 over y dy. That's not changing. But this part here, we can rewrite as 1 over x take away 1 over 2x plus 1. So that is what we will integrate. From there then, integrating. So if we integrate 1 over y, it just goes to ln y. Integrate 1 over x, it goes to ln x. We're taking away 1 over 2x plus 1. If we integrate that, it goes to ln 2x plus 1. But remember to divide by the derivative. So differentiate that to get 2. And that was, therefore, you will have a half ln 2x plus 1. And you've also got plus c. From there, whenever you have something in front of ln, let's move that up to the top so that becomes a power. So we'd have ln y equals ln x take away ln 2x plus 1 to the power of a half plus c. And then from there you can think, well, power of a half just means square root, so we're rewriting that. After that, well, where would you go next? Well, if you look at it, you've got ln something, take away ln something, apply your log rule, so that would become ln y equals ln, and it goes to x over the square root of 2x plus 1 plus c. Just apply your log rules. After that, if you want to get y on its own, you'd have to undo ln. To undo that, you would use exponentials. So let's take the exponential of both sides. We'd have e to the power of ln y would equal e to the power of ln, this fraction, plus c. But there you would have e to the power of something plus something. So undo that. Break that up so it goes to e to the power of ln, the fraction, times e to the power of c. And then after that, well, you know that ln and e, one is the inverse of the other, so they will cancel, leaving you with y equals, again, e ln will cancel, leaving you with x over the square root of 2x plus 1, and it's still times e to the power of c. But you know e to the power of c is just going to be good. It's just going to be a. Therefore, you can replace e to the power of c with a, and that will then become this fraction times a. So just move the a to the top. So we'd have y equals a times x over the square root of 2x plus 1. And that is your answer. Try some of these questions. See how you get on separating the variables too. Looking at some of the log and exponential rules. Once you've done that, try the questions in the booklet, page 81. Any problems, just ask. Have fun. Bye.